Climate change is the number one threat to human civilization, and yet many now agree that the mainstream media are not living up to their remit of public service broadcasting. This means that the carbon emitting machine of human civilization lacks the democratic potency to drive the changes to a cleaner and safer world that we so desperately need. Without adequate information, the subject seems frightening and unapproachable. That is the challenge of the interviews and films in this video channel. Climate change is literally one of the most uh, you know, significant challenges that human civilization has, to, has had to confront. And we can't just bury our heads in the sands. Um, the decisions that we are making to now about our emissions, our carbon emissions, are going to impact future generations, uh, the world that we leave our children and grandchildren. It is one of the most difficult things talking about climate change, that the sheer scale of it paralyzes people. People think it's much too big, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing even we can do, even with global coordination on this subject, which of course we haven't got at the moment. One key area that we must engage with is the climate changes themselves that are going on in the Earth's system. It certainly is believed to have happened several times in the past where um, a phase of global warming has been triggered by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and certainly at several points there's good evidence that a moderate level of global warming, maybe two or three degrees, has then been enough to release, to trigger uh, a re massive release of methane into the atmosphere. And the assumption there is that has a massively enhancing effect on global warming uh, to the extent that nothing can cope, nothing can limit it, and, and it has to run its course. There is a potential risk that if warming continues, the larger and maybe a great and massive amount of methane could be released from this burn Arctic shell. Of course, there is a potential risk. And in terms of potential risk, I, I would say that this burn Arctic shelf is the most potential because, as we said, the carbon pool is huge and the, the water shallow is very shallow and the warming occurs stronger than in different areas of the world ocean. And of course, it is a potential risk. Shortly speaking, we do not like what we see there. Absolutely do not like. And what we are seeing now, since the last uh, two decades of the IPCC reporting on the science of climate change, this is the fifth assessment report that's just come out over these two decades, uh, is that the projections that were made in the earlier reports, which were a fan of uh, uh, upper limit and lower limit, the actual uh, temperature rise and associated impacts that we see including sea ice melt and glacier ice melt are well above the upper range of the predictions, the earlier predictions. So the predictions were over a range and we are hitting the upper end of that range consistently on many, many different things. So it's quite possible that even the ranges that we gave were underestimates uh, and the reality may be much worse than we had imagined. I think we all hope that emission reductions will be achieved, but the uh, lack of success of current attempts at international agreements encourages pessimism. And I honestly would bet, sad though it is, that the annual CO2 emissions are going to rise year by year for at least the next 20 years, and that will build up a cumulative level close to 500 parts per million by then. Each one of us should attempt to understand properly what these climate changes really mean for ours and our children's futures. Well, I think that the concept of adapting to the climate change is really a dangerous one because there is the potential for climate effects which humanity practically cannot adapt to. If the ice sheets become unstable and sea level goes up, multimeters and eventually tens of meters, well you're going to put all of the cities on coasts all around the world underwater and you will destroy all of that heritage. So we don't want that to happen. That's The economic consequences of that are so enormous it, it makes no sense to talk about adaptation to that. And likewise if we, if we burn all the fossil fuels then we certainly will cause the methane hydrates eventually to come out and cause several degrees more warming. And it's not clear that civilization could survive that extreme climate change. The, the general conclusion is pretty dire that, that if, if, you, if you get to four degrees of warming, then collapse of civilization is, is what's going to happen because the world won't be able to sustain anywhere near its present population. So the result will be chaos. 
and, and warfare. Um, so that's, that's just, that the eerie thing is that that's predicted by the IPCC uh, report, but the, the projection of warming by the end of the century is four degrees. But nowhere do they state at all that four degrees is a catastrophe for, for uh, economically and so socially for the, for the planet. Cleaning up the engines of human civilization will benefit everyone and is forecast to lead us into a far more secure and safer world, but we all need to support the changes being proposed. The actions that are needed for mitigation to prevent the problem actually make sense for other reasons. We would like to move to clean energy future sooner rather than burning up all the fossil fuels. Right now, the only reason we're on that path to burn up all the fossil fuels is that we're subsidizing them. The public is being forced to subsidize fossil fuels because of the power of the fossil fuel industry. Oil, coal industries have so much power in governments all around the world. It's not just the United States. The fossil fuel industry is, in effect, forcing the public to subsidize them. The timescale suggested at present for radical change threatening the stability, the viability almost of humanity on this planet becomes more alarming the more research appears. And that's why I think we just need to be aware of all the options that might be available to us. But here we are, faced now with an unprecedented amount of scientific information about our situation, about the nature of the threat, faced with some apparently wild and very ambitious proposals about how we might minimize risk, and the best possible, the most intelligent possible public discussion can only help us here. These interviews are part of an ongoing series with scientists and thought leaders from around the world, aiming to present scientific research, ethical perspectives, in-depth looks at specific risks or game-changing technologies that may or may not decide our future. Simply subscribe to this channel to be part of this critical and important worldwide discussion.